All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Greg. I'm going to be Justin here in a minute. We're from the wild world of animals. we a lot of animals to show you, but hopefully the most important thing everyone remembers out of all the things we're going to see and talk about is that every single animal on this entire planet, very important, doesn't matter if they're big, small, cute, ugly, out in the wild, animals get up every day, go to work, performing jobs. That's what makes nature work. And some animals you might not like at all, that thing's ugly, that thing's scary, yeah, sometimes those are the guys doing jobs help us out the very most. My first animal, he falls into the category of big and probably ugly for most. My description for him, well, it's going to be heavy. Oh, boy, is he heavy. So this is an alligator snapping turtle. He grows to be the largest freshwater turtle in the world. These guys can hit sizes of 250 pounds and live in the neighborhood of 200 years. Right now, he's about 100 years of age. In modern times, they've actually found Civil War musket balls embedded in their shells in the wild. Meaning at some point during the Civil War, somebody took a shot at one, probably trying to kill it for food, survived all the way into our era. Hey, anybody out there like magic? Magic, yeah. Two people, that's what we thought, yeah. He and I have been working on a cool trick, though. If I could just get a brave volunteer to put their finger inside of his mouth, he magically makes it disappear. That's cool. It's going like that. He doesn't eat trick. He'll lay in the water perfectly still, but with his mouth open. Takes the very end of his tongue. It's this little red thing. Looks like a worm. Starts dancing around back and forth. Fish see it, think it's something to eat. Get all excited. They come swimming up. Bam. Lightning fast. He eats them instead. Cool trick. Totally goes fishing. I know it's hard to believe he does anything lightning fast, but when he strikes, you almost don't even see him. And when he clamps down, one of the most powerful bites on the planet. Sounds kind of scary. What do you think would happen if you went swimming somewhere there's an alligator snapping turtle? What's going to happen? Yeah, nothing. Unless you harass him, stick your hand in his mouth, he's not going to do a thing to you. All right, so turtles, adapted for life in water. Web feet, a shell. Whoop. <laughs> hey, can you grab that? <laughs> there you go. We're going to take a look at another reptile with a shell. Might be a little bit different. Hoping you guys can help me by telling me what this next animal is. All right, so what is it? Because it's not a turtle, it's a tortoise. He's adapted for life on land. You won't see him swimming on the water. He's not built for it. His feet, big, heavy, like an elephant. Got to pick up that shell to move it everywhere he goes. Neither animal having a choice in that matter. It's a living part of their body. Born inside of it, it just continues to grow throughout their entire lives. And if you touch your fingernail, your hair, all made out of the same thing. It's a protein called keratin. Even a bird's feathers, a rhinoceros's horn, a deer's antlers, and our tortoise's shell. Let me introduce you to Frank the Tank. He's an African spur thigh tortoise, third largest species on the planet. And be careful, you can go into pet stores at times, you'll see this species for sale. Except they'll be cute little babies, not even that expensive. And people go, oh, it's neat, it's different, I want one. Uh, we have about 10 of these guys, that's how they came to us. He gets twice this size, can live 100 years, and he earns his name, Frank the Tank. He's a living bulldozer. Yeah, you drywall your fence, not a problem for him. Through it he goes. From the time the sun comes up until it sets, he is on the move and eating. The consummate herbivore, pretty much a cow on a shell. Eating that much, what's the next thing that happens? He's a pooping machine, too, a cow on a shell. All right, Justin's going to grab him up because he is making a speedy getaway. I'm going to grab another reptile. And this is going to seem like a dumb question. I'll ask it anyway. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, not a snake at all. 100% lizard. It's called a legless lizard, and that's the way it's supposed to look. We didn't take scissors and try and invent a new species of animal. They're found all over the world. This one comes from Europe, grows to be the largest, and we actually have them here in the United States. So you're probably wondering, why is he a lizard and not a snake? Well, you watch his eyes, he'll do this. He'll blink, keep his eyes closed, having eyelids like we do. Snakes do not. Snakes have scales that cover their entire body, including one across each eye. You get in a staring contest with a snake, you'll always lose. Follow his eye a slight bit back, there's a hole and opening. That's his external ear. Snakes, they don't have one. Scream as loud as you want, the snake will never hear it. And from this part of his body right here, all the way to the end, a tail that can break away and then regrow back. Not all lizards can do that, snakes never. Isn't that strange? There are some very peculiar animals on this planet. Fish that'll walk up on land, birds that can't fly, mammals that legs like a chicken, crazy stuff. But my next reptile for most people, hands down their favorite in the world. People just hear the word snake, their faces light right up. They get so happy. By show of hands, who here would be afraid of a snake? A lot of hands go up. Well, I have good news for you. You want to hear good news? Snakes, like most other wild animals, terrified of you. you got to think of it like this. As big as a snake can get, 
there are species on this planet, their nose could touch the end of the stage, their tail all the way down there. This big around in 300 pounds, huge, even that big, moving along on the ground, they're like this tall. It means they look up at us, we're like a giant. Their brain thinks, man, that thing's gonna eat me. So what do you do if you see a snake? What would you do? Run. Always you run. Don't run. You know what happens if you run? No, they're not going to chase after you. That's TV and movies. Yeah, what's going to happen if you run is you're going to be so scared what you're running, looking over your shoulder at the snake who doesn't care. Uh, you're going to run into something, fall down, snake starts laughing at you, it's embarrassing. Just turn around and walk away, leaving them alone to do their job, which is actually eating rodents. That's why you want them around. Although a rodent isn't going to cut it for this little girl. Yeah, she eats small pigs and goats, but it's a species that can grow large enough where she could swallow an animal the size of a full-grown deer like you see around here. She's called an albino Burmese python. Her normal coloration would be tans and browns, blending her with a natural background. Born albino, she's beautiful, but she sticks out like a sore thumb. And when first born and very small, some predator is going to see her moving, come make a very quick meal out of her. But whenever you see snakes, always sticking their tongues out. What are they doing? Smell it, tasting the air. Remember, no external ear can't hear anything, don't see particularly well. That's why they're always using that tongue. It's their best sensory organ, which actually helps us out. Because as soon as we pick her up, she smells us. Now she knows we're not food. No reason to bite us. When we pick her up, she's used to it. She's handled all the time. She's a professional python. What's going to happen if you pick up a wild snake? Probably going to bite you. Yeah, not because snakes are mean. Snake has no idea what your intentions are and thinks, i got to protect myself. Give you an idea of the difference in our metabolism versus a red animal like this. This snake, if it wanted to, needed to, it could go a year without food. Very large individuals have been known to even go two years without a single bite of food, not even losing an appreciable amount of body weight in the process. It's very hard for a snake to diet. But we have one last reptile before we move on. Sometimes there can be confusion in identifying this type. So I'm going to bring out Junior. He's about three and a half years of age. I'm going to point out a feature on his body which will allow us to figure out what he is, namely his mouth. When you look at it, you realize short and round at the end. So what's that tell you? Alligator or crocodile? Alligator. Crocodile is much longer and pointed. His mouth's open, but he's basically just sitting here chilling out in my hand. And, well, you might think he's some kind of a pet. He's actually more dangerous than a wild alligator. Yeah, how can that be? Well, we feed him. It's the only way he can eat. But because of that, he has no fear of humans. That's a bad thing. He's smart enough to figure out these tall two-legged mammals give him food. So if he's hungry, he sees us walking up, man, he'll come flying right up at us. Not trying to eat us, just knowing food comes from a hand. And that's not good. That's the strongest bite of any animal on the planet. 3,000 pounds per square inch as an adult. I've been bitten by alligators my size, and it feels like someone hit you with a hammer. The bigger they are, harder that bite is. I got you, big guy, I got you. But I've been working on something pretty cool with him. You guys are going to be pretty impressed. I'd say pretty blown away. You might think I'm the world's greatest animal trainer. I actually trained him to say goodbye. You guys want to see it? All right, I got to get everything set up just right. This is very high level stuff. There you go. I know it's impressive. So that is going to finish our reptiles, which will allow us to move on to a new kind of animal. But I'm going to give you a little clue so we can figure out what it is. The closest type of animal that you see today to a dinosaur. Birds. Now my first bird, I stay as far away from you guys as possible, which is all the way back over here. Because this bird absolutely hates kids. Man, he hates kids really bad. He hates women too. Then he hates men as well. Yeah, not a single human being on this planet this bird likes other than me. I have no idea why he likes me. Came to me from a zoo who he just shot attack every human that he saw. This is not normal for any bird, but this bird, well, he was born at this zoo. From the time he hatched out of a little egg, he was hand-raised by people. So you're probably going to think, well, he's going to grow up and be a pet. Yeah, it doesn't work that way with wild animals, hormones and instincts. He's a mature male bird now, and in the wild, he sees another bird of his own species. He wants to chase it away. He doesn't want it living in his area. Raised by humans, I don't know whether he thinks he is a human or we're birds, but that's his reaction now to us. But he makes a very interesting and unique call, which I'm going to get him to make, but I have to be quiet to go back and get him. Or else as soon as he hears me, he starts talking back, and I want him to do it out here. So give me one second.
All right, so that little bundle of loudness, his name is Dunk, and he is what's known as a laughing kookaburra. So if you pay attention when you watch TV and movies, you'll hear that sound play in the background all the time. When they're trying to make you feel someone's in a deep, dark jungle, except he comes from the outback of Australia, you know, we're deep, dark jungles. Remember how I told you how aggressive he is? You might have looked at him and thought, I wouldn't be afraid of him. Yeah, here's the thing, though. Remember that long beak of his? He's really smart. He knows these things are really important to you. That's what he tries to attack. He tries to fly right at you and jam his beak right in your eye. He doesn't miss. But if any of you ever went to Australia, one of those birds would never come near you because their wild animals are going to stay away. Everything I show you, the exact opposite. But here's a question for you. It'll test your animal IQ. What is the fastest animal on the planet? Cheetah. Uh, yeah, cheetah, not even close. She is the fastest animal on land, a respectable 70 miles an hour. Fastest animal in the world, 230 miles per hour. It's called a peregrine falcon. We're gonna meet Aurora. Now, she's not a peregrine falcon. She is what we call a hybrid. That means her mother is one species, what's known as a jeer falcon. Largest falcon in the world, beautiful white bird comes from the Arctic. Dad is what's called a prairie falcon. Comes from the Midwestern part of the US. There we go. So she was born in captivity specifically for the purposes of falconry. So I myself am a master falconer, which just means for a very long time, I train and work with birds like this to go out in the field and hunt together. Very ancient art that people have been practicing for thousands of years. Now she was born in captivity, but raised by her parents. This way she wouldn't imprint, be dangerous like that kookaburra. When she came to me in just a few weeks, I had her trained that I would release her. She'd fly around and come back to this club when I called. When we go out to hunt, I release her. She'll soar so high up in the sky, you can't even see her with the naked eye. Her vision's so incredible, probably the best on the planet. She could see us from over a mile away. Now, if you could see that well, you could sit at one end of a football field, read a book all the way at the other. Eagles see even better than that. So when we're hunting, well, I release her. She soars so high up there. My job, I just walk through a field. My presence might make a game bird like pheasant or quail flush from cover. That's what she wants because she doesn't want to hunt things on the ground. She wants them in the air. So once something takes off, she sees it, she goes into a dive. 150 miles an hour, she'll hit twice as fast as a cheetah. Strikes the prey from above with the powerful feet and sharp claws, kills it right on that impact, follows it to the ground, and then hides. Not from me, but from other predators that now want to try and get her. So think of her as basically a living F-16 fighter jet. So perfectly designed, one of the most efficient killing machines on the planet. But she is designed for hunting during the day. There's another raptor that once the sun goes down, well, that's when they kind of take flight. And of course, we would be talking about an owl. Although you might be surprised to learn, there are some owls, they only come out during the day. This big guy, his name is Yule. He's a European eagle owl, largest species of owl on the planet. Except with birds of prey, the girl's significantly bigger. His wife back at home, 30% bigger than him, and she wears the pants in the relationship. His feet are so strong, if he wanted to, he could go through that glove and through his hand. Sounds pretty scary. What do you think would happen if you approach that bird in the wild? You know, fly away as fast as it could. He'd be scared to death of you. Keep in mind, his strength will allow him to take down and kill a full-grown coyote. It's pretty impressive. If you watch his head, at some point you'll realize it spins all the way around. It's actually a 270 degree turn. 360, your head falls off. 270 is what it is. But the reason why he does it, there's something we can do with our eyes he can't do with his. Let me tell me what it is. I'm doing it right now. Never see him do this. He can't. He doesn't have an eyeball. It's an enormous tube. It sits in his head with a bone around it. Can't move it. Want to look at something? Got to move the whole entire head instead. Extra bones help him to do it. And we have seven neck vertebrae. That's it for us. Him, 14 for that full rotation. And you might not realize it, but if our eyes were as big as his, for as big as we are, ours would be the size of a grapefruit. And the eyes are so big, take up so much room, not a lot left over for a brain. You ever hear the wise old owl? It is not true at all. They're kind of dumb as a rock. You want to talk intelligent birds, ravens and crows. They're some of the smartest animals on the entire planet. But that finishes our birds. and allows us to move on to our last type of animal, which we can relate to, mammals. And my first mammal, I know we're going to have to wake him up. He's extremely nocturnal. Sleeps during the day, active at night. But I know how to wake him up once we get there. But let's say a very recognizable animal. You see this shell, we know armadillo. Caesar is a three-banded armadillo. He has one, two, three bands that connect the top and the bottom so he can roll himself into a ball. That's how he sleeps and how he protects himself from predators. And here's how to wake him up. It's actually pretty simple. All they got to do is let that nose touch a surface. 
and he's wide awake. Yeah. He'd be happier down here on the ground. That's where he can find his food. He's an insectivore. Bugs, grubs, and earthworms. That's what he eats. And all night long. He can smell an earthworm a foot down on the ground. Has big claws on the front. He uses to dig him up and eat him. If, but if there's a threat, he just stops, rolls into a ball. Doesn't roll away, unless something smacks him, of course. And he's going to have tunnels all around, close by, that he's dug himself out, where he might try and go down into those as well. This will protect him against small predators. But where he comes from, you, know, you have jaguar, you have puma. They're going to crunch right through him without a problem. That's as big as he gets. There is an even smaller species of armadillo, but also a giant one. Yeah, the giant armadillo is like that big, but extremely endangered. He comes from South America. He's on the smaller end of the type of animal he is. We're going to look at another South American animal. He's on the exact opposite end of the size spectrum, being the largest of his kind in the world. His name is Javier. We call him Javi for short. He is a capybara, world's largest rodent. Pretty much a guinea pig on steroids. Seriously, though, makes the same vocalizations as a guinea pig. Guinea pigs are rodents, so is he just world's largest. How do you know he's a rodent? <laughs> Watch how he eats his corn on the cob, a little differently than you and I. He has huge razor-sharp incisors, top and bottom in his mouth, connected to really powerful jaw muscles, which allows him to chew through about anything. And rodents constantly chewing all the time, everything around them, to keep those incisors worn down. If not, they can grow through his upper and lower jaw, and he's going to have a problem eating. So, you're going to find them in or close to water. They're highly aquatic, but perfectly built for it. The feet are huge and webbed. They're excellent swimmers, hold their breath a long time. Nostrils, eyes, and ears right on the top plane of his head. You can hide that big body under the water, but that little part sticks up. Hear, smell, and see everything going on around him. Here, big guy. <laughs> Which is going to help him, because lots of things want to eat a capybara. Jaguar, green anaconda, caiman. If there is a threat, well, he'll just try and jump in the water and swim away. Now my next mammal, I'm just going to tell you right now, he is very unusual. So much so that when I bring him out, most people look at him and say, I have no idea what this thing is. I then tell you what he is, and most people are like, never heard of it, still have no idea. So if this is your reaction, don't feel bad, trust me, we get it all the time. Now his name is Boomer. He's also very nocturnal, but he loves to come out for a show because he loves to eat. You know, he's giving nice treats. All right. So, Boomer is what's known as a binturong. This is the world's largest prehensile tail animal. That means his tail of his right here, he can wrap it around things, use it like an extra hand. It's what a lot of people think monkeys do with their tails, but very few monkeys actually do that. This tail is so strong that I keep a hand on it, because if not, sometimes he'll wrap it around my throat. He's not trying to hurt me, he's just anchoring himself like I'm a tree. But he can hold on so tight, I can't breathe, let alone talk. He literally can choke me out. And I put a towel on my shoulders before he goes up for two reasons. First, his claw is really sharp for digging into trees. But secondly, his smell. <laughs> it is potent and overwhelming. He smells like buttered popcorn. And anything he touches or gets near in a very short order smells like buttered popcorn. But his favorite hobby of all? Eating. He'll eat anything. He's called an omnivore. Other animals, fruits, berries, nuts, vegetables, insects, anything he can get that mouth on. I don't know how Benarongs do it, but you could feed him one pound of food, he'll make two pounds of waste out of it. It's pretty impressive, but not fun cleaning up after him. But their nickname, they're called a bear cat. But even that's misleading. Yeah, they're not related to bears or cats at all. They get this nickname because when they walk, it's on the soles of their feet. He looks like a little miniature bear. He'll get happy or excited, he'll start purring like a cat. Very strange animal. So he always takes my headset off. So that brings us to our very last mammal. She's also really strange, but very recognizable. Everyone's going to know immediately what she is. But I know we're going to have to wake her up. She'll sleep 22 hours out of a day. Even then, she'll hit the snooze button over and over again. There she is. Hi, sunshine. So her name is Amy and, yeah, one of nature's strangest animals, the two-toed sloth. Even that's confusing. There's two species, two-toed and three-toed. Now right, you look at her front foot, she got two toes. Her back foot, three. Only look at the front to tell the difference. Two-toed having two, three-toed three, as well as three in the back. So yeah, everything they do in life, slow and upside down. Eat, drink, sleep, mate, give birth. Sometimes in the wild, they'll even die, and they're still just clinging in an upside-down position. 
So all this sleeping, slow movement, and in the wild, and I've actually seen them in the wild. They're really hard to see. They have moss and algae that grows into their coat, turning them green. Now you're up in a tree, sleeping all the time, green in color. This hides them from their number one predator, the harpy eagle. Biggest eagle in the world. My arms outstretched, probably wider than that. Powerful bird, sees her moving like this, would fly in, sink the talons in, and rip her right off a branch. That's not easy. She's incredibly strong. When she grips onto something, you need about five hands to pry all those feet free. Here's how strange it is. It's the only animal we know of that could technically die of starvation with a full stomach of food. Yeah, that's how slowly everything moves through their system. And then one step from there, in the wild, they might only poop once a month. They make a long, slow trek out of the tree to just above the ground to do their thing, and back up in the tree they go. Yeah, it's kind of a mystery because you could just poop up in a tree. Lots of animals do it, but yeah, it just makes lots more susceptible attack from other animals. And don't confuse this slow movement in thinking that she's not smart. She's a very smart animal. Absolutely knows the difference between myself and Justin and other people. She's not necessarily friendly with everyone she meets. Not a mean animal whatsoever. Born here in captivity, she's my animal, been with me five years. But my first encounter with her, she bit right through my thumb. Yeah, yeah, it's not a pet, but not a mean animal at all. But I'll give you, I'll come over closer because she'll show you. She, she's asking me to already take her back to bed. <laughs> she's had enough, enough excitement. I'm just going to keep it one second, one second, sweetheart. But once again, recognizes us and readily knows that this means like, hey, just go ahead and take me back to sleep. Yeah, just give us one second. One, st one strange last thing, excellent swimmers. <laughs> She'll ask you guys next. <laughs> Basically, in the wild, uh, in the in the flooded season in the Amazon, that's when I was there, there's 30 feet of water everywhere. Where you're a sloth up in a tree, great. You want to get from that tree to that tree, there's no trees to cross. They get in the water, float, and then doggy paddle. Three times faster than they crawl, but still pretty slow. We're going to let her hang out here for a minute. You get a chance, you want to take a closer look at her, just come up to the fence here uh, until she just really kind of makes it a point that she wants to go back to sleep. <laughs> just wait, just wait. I uh, hope you enjoyed our program, folks. Enjoy the rest of your day here at the Dodge County Fair. Hope you had a wonderful time.